Hey, welcome to my channel. Today we have a brief retelling of the film on the program, which will not leave anyone indifferent. A strong thriller that makes you empathize with all the emotions along with the main character. So, to your attention Monolith, filmed in 2016. Be careful, spoilers ahead. The Monolith is a machine created using the latest technology, which has no analogs in the world. Adamant and armor, ultra-thin windows, enhanced security system, safe, the safest car in the world. Sandra and her son David get into the monolith and go to their grandmother. On the way, Sandra meets Lilith, a very smart program in the car. Lilith immediately delights Sandra. She even turns on cartoons for David so that he doesn't get sad on the way. Sandra was impressed with Lilith's abilities. Sandra, bored on her way asks Lilith if she can determine Sandra's weight. Lilith answers Sandra's questions to the gram, which surprises her. Stopping at the turn, Sandra asks if Lilith can show the weight of the other passengers who were in the car. Lilith fulfills Sandra's request. After reviewing the information, Sandra realizes that she was not the only woman in this car, and most likely there was some unknown woman there. Her husband Carl, who works as a producer and often travels for work, calls her. Since Sandra is afraid of flying, she often stays at home with her son. Carl and Sandra talk about their son, about the car. David constantly calls his father dad and Sandra by her first name, which annoys her. The husband asks if Sandra has connected her phone to a program that will allow her to drive a car from her phone. She replies that no, because her son plays with his phone all the time. In the store on the way to her grandmother, Sandra meets a stranger who recognizes her as a pop singer. He invites her to go to the party with him, but she refuses. While Sandra is talking to a fan, her son disappears. She runs around the store looking for him, but does not find him. In desperation, she runs out into the parking lot and sees him in a convertible with strange girls who accuse her of being a bad mother. Get up from annoying strangers, Sandra gets into the car and turns on the safe function to protect herself and the child. After calming down, Sandra tells her son how popular she once was and how great she sang. She remembers how she met her husband Carl, who left his wife for her sake. Sandra and David have a fun trip, singing and laughing, until she decides to call Jesse. Jesse is Sandra's friend, with whom they used to perform together. Jesse asks Sandra if she wants to return to the team, and if she regrets leaving. After talking a little, Jesse tells how great things are with her and thanks Carl for this. Sandra gets nervous when she hears her husband's name, but Jesse reassures her by saying that he just gave her the number of a producer he knows. To defuse the situation at the end, Jesse jokes with Sandra, which will surely thank Carl, but instead of laughing, she gets suspicions about her relationship with her husband. Jesse replies that she is not the one her husband sleeps with and turns off the phone. Sandra doesn't know what to think. She starts calling Carl, but his phone is switched off. Sandra gets angry and starts yelling at David, who is in the back seat eating corn balls and throwing them all around him having calmed down a bit, Sandra decides to go to her husband in Los Angeles and sort everything out on the spot. On the road, Sandra calls Carl on the phone again and again, but his phone is on the answering machine. To arrive faster, Sandra asks Lilith to find the shortest way. Lilith complies with the request, but the road is empty and unpaved, which makes Sandra nervous. To calm down, Sandra starts smoking, after which a siren sounds in the car and Lilith asks to leave the car. Sandra gets angry and disconnects the car from Lilith, putting it in full manual control. Around the night. Tired and frustrated, Sandra does not notice a deer on the road and crashes into it. David starts crying. To calm her son, Sandra gives him a phone with a game, and she gets out of the car to check what happened. While playing with his phone, David accidentally enters the program that controls the car and locks all the doors, turning on the safe program and leaving Sandra outside. Sandra realizes that she made a mistake by leaving the phone to her son. She tries to talk to him, asks him to turn off the application, showing how to do it on the car window. But David is too small so he does not understand what they want from him and continues to play without reacting to Sandra. Sandra calls for help in a panic, but no one is around. She tries to talk to Lilith, forgetting that she turned it off herself. 
Having calmed down a little, Sandra finds a wrench and tries to knock out a window in the car, but she does not succeed, only the siren turns on, making David cry a lot. Realizing that the windows cannot be broken, Sandra decides to go look for help. She plays with her son to calm him down. When David calms down, Sandra tells him that she will be back soon and leaves. Sandra finds the power plant, climbs over the fence, trying to find help. She finds a room with a telephone, but she can only call the power hotline from it, where she is told that they are not working until Thursday. Realizing that no one can be found here, Sandra returns to the car. Sandra tries again and again to break the glass, turning on the siren, which upsets David. From crying, he gets asthma and starts to cough. Sandra calms down and tries to calm her son down. David falls asleep. All night, Sandra just sits next to the car, sometimes smoking, trying to collect her thoughts and calm down. She hopes Carl will worry and make phone calls. And when he realizes that they have disappeared, he will find them and save them. Positive emotions are replaced by negative ones, and Sandra thinks that Carl will not do anything to get rid of them. Sandra lies on the hood of the car and sees a star. She wants to make a wish, but realizes it's a plane. After a moment, she remembers that she was passing a road sign that announced that the airport was nearby. Sandra understands that this is a chance to save her son. But when she looks in the car, she sees that he is not there. Sandra is in a panic looking for her son. Waking up on the hood of a car, Sandra realizes that it was a dream, and around her is a rocky desert. Sandra sees that the temperature in the car is rising, she closes the hatch with her clothes and asks her son to wait until she returns. David cries, he asks her not to leave. He tries to get the phone, but he is fastened in the child seat, and the phone fell to the floor. Sandra understands that she has no way out and goes in search of help. She is hot, she is thirsty, but most of all she is afraid that she will not be able to save her son. Barely walking, Sandra finds water. After drinking water, she realizes that the only chance to find help is to climb the rock. The big plane she sees gives Sandra hope of being saved. The temperature in the car is 42 degrees. Sandra runs to the plane and the closer she gets, the more she realizes that the airfield is long closed. She is desperate. Sandra can't believe her eyes, she climbs on the plane, hoping to find something that will help her. She searches everywhere, eventually realizing that her attempts are in vain. All that was found was a bottle of water, a few bottles of liquor and tires from the wheels. Using tires and alcohol, Sandra kindles a fire, hoping to attract at least someone's attention. Having collected water in a bottle, Sandra returns to the car. Almost reaching the car, she sees her clothes blown off the car's sunroof by the wind. Sandra runs to the car, where she finds David unconscious. She pours water over the car, hoping to cool it down a bit. Sandra remembers how the car reacted to a cigarette, so she kindles a dry bush. Smoke enters the car, a warning signal sounds, but the car does not open. Realizing that she is only making things worse, Sandra pours the rest of the water onto the fire. The temperature keeps rising. David doesn't come to his senses. All Sandra's attempts to break the glass are useless. The hope to save the sun disappears with every blow on the glass. At the place where the monolith was standing, a Porsche arrives from which Sandra comes out with a different hairstyle and her husband. Sandra falls to her knees begging David's forgiveness, and Kyle reproaches her for coming here for nothing. Carl tries to take her away, but she won't go. He says, do you know why he died? Sandra remembers the day when she tried to protect her son, how angry and just wanted to smoke. She blames her husband for what happened. But Carl denies this, saying it's only her fault. You are responsible for David's death. You killed him. Sandra wakes up and realizes that she has fainted from the heat. She rushes to the car, where David is standing still. She tries to talk to her son. She tells him that she is there, that he is her angel. She doesn't know what to do, so she just apologizes to her son. David barely moved. Happy Sandra notices that a wild dog is looking at her. Sandra tries to get on the car, 
but the metal is too hot. With no way out, Sander crawls under the car. The dog runs around trying to bite and finds a deer under the car. The dog pulls the deer out, causing the car to roll down the hill. Sandra, resting her feet, tries to slow down and stop the car, because there is a cliff behind and if the car falls, then David will not survive. Barely stopping the car, Sandra despairs again, not knowing what to do. She comes to the edge of the cliff. Will she jump? She just looks down. In place of hopelessness, comes an idea. Sandra has a plan, but for this, she needs a key, with which she tried to break the glass in the car. The key is next to the deer carcass that the wild dog eats for breakfast. Sandra is so angry that she does not care about the evil grin, she screams at the dog, who growls at her and drives her away. Taking the key, she breaks the stone preventing the car from rolling down the cliff. Sandra is trying to push the car up a steep cliff. Perhaps. Was she mad? The car is heavy and barely moves, but Sandra does not give up, she pushes the car to the cliff. She looks at her son and pushes the car into a cliff. The car falls down and reconfigures, with Sandra running after it. She falls and breaks her leg, it is hard for her to walk. Sandra realizes that the car has opened, grabs her son and runs with him into the shade of the cliff. Sandra is holding her son, who doesn't come to his senses. David is slowly dying. To save David, Sandra starts the car and drives forward looking for a way onto the road. There is a tall rock ahead, they are trapped. There seems to be no way out. Sandra reconfigures the car's suspension and decides to drive onto a rock. Collision warning signals are heard in the car, but Sandra does not give up and she manages to drive out breaking through the stone embankment. Sandra is on the road and has no plans to stop. Arriving at the hospital, the girl is only interested in whether her son will be saved. She is by his side and won't let him go again. But will David survive? David opens his eyes, and Sandra hears the long-awaited, Mom. Liked the video? Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.